Good things take time. That's what they say, right? And often it's true. It certainly take me a couple of years to get my music to tens of thousands of fans, hundreds of thousands of listeners and millions of streams on Spotify. Along the way, I learned a lot of super valuable lessons, but I also made a lot of big mistakes. So I was thinking, what if I could travel back in time and tell myself which mistakes to avoid and as a result, grow to tens of thousands of fans and listeners and millions of streams faster? Hey, it's John here at Hyped It, and in this video, I want to talk about mistakes. I've been promoting my music for years, and while there are success stories, there are also mistakes that I make. There are mistakes that I experience personally, there are mistakes I see other music artists make. And so what I wanted to do in this video is share with you mistakes I've made and I've seen that have helped music artists, including myself, back from growing a fan base and getting an audience much faster than they actually could. I don't want this to be the case for you. I wanna help you get your music heard and grow that fan base and grow those listeners and streams, for example, on Spotify as fast as possible. And that's why I think it's important to be aware of these mistakes. Now, before we jump in, don't forget to hit the subscribe, the like, and the bell icon below so that you can get more videos like this on YouTube that help you reach and get more fans for your music. Mistake number one is a mistake that I've certainly made lots and lots of time, which is not being patient. When I drop a new song, I certainly oftentimes find myself being completely impatient. I want the song to grow as fast as possible. I wanna see it on lots of playlists as fast as possible. I just want all of the good things happening for the song right away. But that's not always the path to the biggest results. And I was reminded of this actually just right now because I dropped a new song last month and I used Hyped It's Music Ad Automation to launch the promo campaign for the song in order to get listeners and streams on Spotify. And when the campaign started about a day or two in, I noticed that the cost per conversion was around 40 cents, which appeared high to me, much higher than what I see with most of my longer running campaigns. But I reminded myself, don't be impatient, don't be impatient. So I let it run. And now 30 days later, that campaign is converting at 19 cent, which means for the same budget, I'm now getting more than double the fans and listeners in Spotify. As a result, my monthly listeners on Spotify have gone up from somewhere in the 20,000s to now somewhere in the 30,000s. So the impact here of not making this mistake, not being impatient, but being patient and letting this campaign run and let it optimize over time has made a huge difference. So to avoid the mistake of not being patient, my recommendation is if you run running ads for your music, don't try to judge them after a day or two. Give it at least seven days, and if you can, give it 30 days. That's even better. If I had evaluated this campaign after seven days, I would have had to turn it off because it wasn't at its peak performance yet, but now, 30 days in, it's actually the best campaign I've running in all of my account. And it got there just by me doing nothing, letting the software and AI do its thing, and leaning back and seeing my listeners and my streams go up. Mistake number two, not putting out music often enough. The way most music platforms are structured today is that they favor music artists who drop new music often. It's very similar to the way a lot of social media platforms work. Let's take Spotify, for example. Every time you drop a release, you get a four week time window at release radar. Now, let's say you have an album ready to go with 12 tracks. You could decide to drop this album and you get a four week time window on release radar for the entire album and then nothing. But if you take those 12 songs and you release them song after song after song, one song per month, you can stay on release radar for an entire year just using this album. I know making music takes time, but if you can drop at least a song a month in order to get a shot at release radar, a shot at editorial playlist, and another horse in the race for Discover Weekly. Don't make the mistakes of releasing just once and then waiting too long until your fans hear from you again or you give Spotify's algorithm another reason to promote you. Mistake number three, following the crowd. This is one that I've certainly fell victim to, especially in the beginning when I started putting out my music, not getting an audience for it and then looking around and checking out how are all these artists around me? How are they promoting their music? What I did is I started mimicking them. I looked at what they were doing and I tried the same things with my own music. And I did this until I realized that there are two big problems with this. The first problem, 
I was mimicking their promotion efforts without even knowing whether they were working. And that showed in my results. When I first started promoting my music, I didn't get any exciting results. Neither did the music artists that I was mimicking, but I just didn't know any better. And the second problem is that if you just follow the crowd and do what everybody else does, it makes it harder for you to stand out. A great example of this is Friday being the default release date, right? Most music artists and most record labels always drop their music on Friday. Now, why is that? Originally, that was established in order to prevent piracy between global territories and have music drop on the same day all around the globe. But for most independent music artists, piracy is not a big issue. I'm certainly not concerned. Somebody might swipe my song on release day and share it somewhere online and my fans not checking out my music on Spotify. I've not seen this happening. But what it does, if I release on Friday, means I have to compete with everybody else releasing on Friday. So in response to this, what I've done is I've been releasing my music on Thursdays for the last year. And it's been working really great. I've gotten great release radar putting out my music on Thursdays. Obviously, release radar still kicks in on Friday, but I have not seen any downside in release radar pickup. Most of my songs are being picked up by Discover Weekly about three to four weeks after the release day. So there's no negative impact on that one. And it's so much easier to promote these new releases to my fans because my fans follow other artists and they get swamped with emails and messages on Fridays, hey, my new song is out. But I avoid all that crowd because I can just email them and message them on Thursday, the day before when nobody else releases. And it's a lot easier for my emails and messages to stand out like this. I can even position it as in, hey, you're getting my songs a day early. So lots of benefits of avoiding this mistake of following the crowd and only doing what you see everybody else do. Mistake number four, ignoring the time of year it is. When it comes to music promotion, there's definitely seasonality. And especially if we're talking about the holiday season at the end of the year, end of November and December, most music fans only have holiday music on their mind. So if you wanna get the most out of your promotion effort and your budget, consider seasonality. And for an example, do not promote non-holiday music in December. It's just gonna be an uphill battle. You're gonna have such a hard time to be heard and for the same time effort and budget you're gonna get much much better results if you do that in January when people's mind is off the holiday season and last but not least mistake number five waiting too long to get started your music deserves to get hurt so the sooner you start promoting it the better when I got started with music, I would release it, I would put it out, and I would just wait, wait, wait for things to magically happen, just they never did. So it's taken me quite a learning curve of getting comfortable with the fact that I do need to promote my music in order to attract an audience, and that music ads are the most powerful promotion method in my opinion. Nothing has me given results that were as big, as predictable, as controllable, and as time efficient as running ad campaigns for my music. So the number one mistake that I would share with myself if I could go back in time would be this one, waiting too long to get started with music ad, because this was literally one of the biggest game changer when it comes to my music career. And with that said, my goal is to make it a lot easier and faster for independent music artists like us to promote their music. This is why I launched Hyped It in the first place. And this is why we recently added the music ad automation feature to Hyped It that allows music artists to launch full promo ad campaigns in just minutes using software and AI. This works like magic, okay? It works for any genre. Thousands of music artists are already using it to grow their fans, streams, and listeners on Spotify. And it literally only takes minutes to get started. If this is something you want to try out, I'm going to leave a link to a video above here that shows you how to launch a full promo campaign from A to Z on Hyped It literally in like five minutes. And if you want to give it a try, I'm going to leave a link below this video here. You can sign up for a free seven day trial that allows you to launch multiple campaigns see how many listeners, fans, and streams you're getting on Spotify before even deciding whether this is a tool you wanna keep using. If I could go back in time and give myself that tool, now that would be the ultimate game changer. Sadly, I can't, but I'm using it now. And with this said, I hope to see you on the inside and soon in another video. Cheers.